Hi everybody. In this video we're going to do a quick demonstration of a very simple operating activity section of the statement of cash flows. And then we're going to look at a complete statement of cash flows example. So let's start by looking at a very simple operating activity section uh, of a statement of cash flows. So here we're given a little bit of an income statement information and a little bit of information from a balance sheet. We're not given a complete income statement and we're not given a complete balance sheet. Typically, we would have an income statement and a balance sheet when we're looking to complete a, complete a statement of cash flows. But in this case, we've just got a little bit of information and we're going to look and see how that would affect or play a role in the operating activity section of a statement of cash flows. Now remember, we are using the indirect method of a statement of cash flows. So that also means we're going to start with net income and we're going to adjust net income which is under the accrual basis of accounting we're going to adjust that to the cash basis of accounting so keep in mind also in the operating activity section of the statement of cash flows we analyze current assets and current liabilities and we also add back depreciation we add back losses and subtract the gains so the first thing I like to do is get my gains and losses out of the way. Well, there are no gains and losses that we're provided with, so we're assuming there are no gains and losses. Then we can look at depreciation. Well, we do have depreciation in our income statement information there. So remember that depreciation is a non-cash expense, but it decreased net income. So since it decreased net income but didn't affect cash, we have to add depreciation back to our operating activity section of the statement of cash flows. So we'll add back that $10,000 in depreciation expense. So we're now done with the income statement information that we're given there and we can move on down to our balance sheet where we're going to analyze current assets and current liabilities. It tells us that accounts receivable increased. Now we have to remember why would accounts receivable increase? Well, accounts receivable would increase if we sold stuff on account and haven't yet collected the cash. But we know under the accrual basis of accounting, we record revenues when they're earned, not necessarily when cash is received. So that $9,000 has already a, is, is affecting net income, but it hasn't affected cash. So that increase in accounts receivable needs to be decreased. Okay, so that's a decrease in accounts receivable, and that was for $9,000. And then we're told that there's a decrease in accounts payable. Well, what would make accounts payable go down? Well, accounts payable would decrease if we had paid toward them. Well, if you decrease accounts payable by paying them, then cash has decreased. So a decrease in accounts payable would be a decrease in cash. So we will subtract that $6,000 as well. Now that leaves us with, let's see if it's a positive or negative number first. We find that it's a positive number. So that means that we have net cash received from operating activities the number had been negative if the sum of all of net income and all the adjustments to net income had been negative then we would have called this net cash used by operating activities so here is a more in-depth uh, example of a statement of cash flows we're asked again to complete a statement of cash fl cash flows so we want all three sections. We want operating, investing, and financing. And we're going to do it by the indirect method. Here we're given our income statement, but we're not given a balance sheet. In, instead of a balance sheet, we're given some um, just partial balance sheet with just our assets. So our current assets and current liabilities. So we're not given any um, owner's equity uh, section of the balance sheet here. And we're also given some additional information, letters A through E, there, um, which also will be important in our statement of cash flows. So also be on the lookout for any non-cash investing and financing um, 
pieces that would go down at the bottom of the statement of cash flows in a little schedule. And we talked about those in the prior video. So what I would like for you to do is press pause on the video now and attempt to create a statement of cash flows with this information. Now, remember the check figure that we've talked about before. That's your cash number. So we don't really analyze that on the statement of cash flows, even though it's a current asset. It's more like a check figure. So we get the difference in beginning and ending cash, and that should equal the sum of the three sections of our statement of cash flows. So it looks like the net change in cash was $17,000. That's really a check figure. So if the three sections of your statement of cash flows sum to an increase in cash of $17,000, then you're probably on the right track. Okay, so give this one a shot. And once you have completed it, come back and we'll take a look at the solution. Okay, so we are back and here is the completed statement of cash flows based on this data. So let's just go through it quickly and check your work as we go. So in the operating activity section, we start with net income. Then we're gonna adjust net income by analyzing our current assets and current liabilities, which they gave us in a, in a balance sheet format. And we're also going to analyze uh, depreciation and gains and losses. So I'll start with depreciation, and that, of course, is found on the income statement. Remember, depreciation is a non-cash expense, so it has to be added back. There was a decrease in accounts receivable of $17,000. Well, if accounts receivable decreased, we must have gotten the cash. Um, so therefore, cash is increasing. So if accounts receivable is going down, cash is going up. So that's why it's a positive number there. We had an increase in inventory. Well, if inventory is increasing, that means we must have bought more inventory. So therefore, cash is going down. Remember, we talked before in the prior video that, well, inventory can be purchased with cash or on account. But in the statement of cash flows, we really just consider if it's being purchased with cash. Because if it happened to be purchased on account, we will get to that when we analyze the accounts payable. So it will equal itself out. And that's what we're going to do now. So it seems like there was an increase in accounts payable. Well, if accounts payable increases, that means that we didn't pay toward them. So that very well could be part of that inventory that we purchased. So therefore, cash is going up by $14,000 because we didn't pay off those accounts payable. They're increasing. But there was a decrease in accrued liabilities. Well, if there's a decrease in accrued liabilities, that must mean we have paid toward them. So there was a total adjustments of an increase to cash of $42,000. Therefore, net cash provided by operating activities was $92,000. Now we'll move on to the investing activities section, which is where we analyze our long-term assets. Now, we weren't given the long-term asset section of the balance sheet, so that must be in this little extra information over here that um, we were provided. So let's look through that. Letter A says we acquired $120,000 of plant assets. Well, that's great, but some of it may have been with cash and some of it may have been on a note payable. And it just so happens that's true. Of this amount... 103,000 was paid in cash and 17,000 by signing a note payable. Let's take both of these parts now. So we paid $103,000 in cash. So that's where the first part of the investing activity section comes from. Okay, so we decreased cash by $103,000 by paying cash for this asset. But there's still there's still $17,000 left. Now, acquiring an asset is an investing activity section, but we didn't pay cash for the rest of it. We signed a note payable, which is a financing activity. So we actually have a non-cash investing and financing activity here as well in letter A. And that's what we see down here at the very bottom, or we would see at the very bottom of our statement of cash flows, a non-cash investing and financing activities schedule, if you will, down at the bottom of your statement of cash flows. So we've taken care of part A in the story there. And so letter B says we had a cash receipt from the sale of land that totaled 
and there was no gain or loss. So it's a good thing there wasn't a gain or loss because we didn't put those in the operating activity section if there had have been. So maybe we should have read this information first before we created the operating activity section. So always keep that in mind too. If there's a story involved, it's probably a good idea to read that information first because if there had been a gain or loss, that would have to go in the operating activity section. So we would have to have altered that section. All right, so if we sell land totaling $24,000, that's an increase to cash. So therefore, we would put that down in the investing activity section, cash sale from land, $24,000. So now we have cash used by investing because it's a negative number. We actually spent more on our investing activities than we received from our investing activities of $79,000. Now let's move on to the last section of our statement of cash flows, the financing activity section. Now, this is where we're going to analyze our long-term liabilities and our owner's equity accounts. Since our balance sheet does not provide us with the long-term liability section or the owner's equity section, we assume the information we need is going to be in the little story up there. So we're going to continue down. Letter C says that we had cash receipts from the issuance of common stock totaled $32,000. Well, if we issue stock and we receive cash, then cash is going up. So that's increasing the financing activity section by $32,000. So C is good. Letter D, a payment of note payable is $17,000. So we're going to pay that note payable from letter A. So a Payment of note payable, $17,000. Well, if we pay toward a note payable, then cash is going down. So it's a decrease to cash in the financing activity section. And the last thing, the payment of dividends of $11,000. Well, remember that dividends is a, is a byproduct, really, of us having issued stock. And issuing stock is a financing activity. So therefore, dividends, the payment of dividends is a financing activity if we're paying the dividends. So therefore, the payment of dividends will decrease our financing activity section by $11,000. So now we have net cash provided by financing activities of $4,000. So now what we want to do is we want to sum up our three sections, so we have 92,000 provided by operating, we have 79,000 used by investing, and we have $4,000 provided by financing. So when you sum those three sections up, you're gonna find that your net change in cash is $17,000. And if you'll recall, the check figure was a change in cash of $17,000. We went from a $15,000 balance in cash to $32,000 in cash, which is a positive change of $17,000. And that is our statement of cash flows. Now let's think about it just a little bit. What this is telling us is a $92,000 cash provided by operating a good thing. Well, think about that for a second. This is our day-to-day -day operations. So absolutely, we always want the net cash provided by operating to be positive. That's a good thing. If it's negative, that means our day-to-day -day operations are not providing cash for the business. Well, let's look at the investing activity section. In this case, it was a used amount. It was negative of $79,000. Is that bad? Is a negative amount bad in the investing activity section? Well, what does it tell us? A negative number or cash used in the investing activity section means the business is expanding. They're investing in buildings, land, equipment, those types of things. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it, it leads an investor to believe that the business is growing. Well, let's look at the last section, financing activities. And this one's positive. So remember, financing activities shows us the borrowing of money in most cases. Um, and it's positive here. It's not a huge number, but it does show that we are financing our business. So we don't want this one to be humongous, but it's okay if it's slightly positive. A negative financing activity section would mean that we are paying back our debt, which would really look good as well. So you really have to dive down into these statements to really, how, really understand what's going on with them.